Thank you. So I'm just going to um, make some remarks on, on, on what just happened, um, and then I'm going to make a little announcement that, that some folks might find interesting. Next slide, please. So what did we, what did we just witness uh, here you know, in, in, in this session? Um, in, in my mind, we've just witnessed something truly extraordinary, and it's something that, that, that really will take observational research you know, to a whole new level in terms of the quality of the evidence. Next slide, please. So what we started with was an excellent study, and, and you know, um, you know, Yasser is absolutely to be commended uh, for the work, um, and it, it, you know, it's, a, it's a truly wonderful study, uh, an important problem, an interesting finding. But you can think of it like there's a world of evidence out there, and what what this paper provides is one dot in that kind of cloud of evidence, just one dot. Um, and in, inside the paper, Yasser did an excellent job of, of doing a, you know, a sensitivity analysis. Um, and that, if you will, is that's a few more dots near the first dot you know, in, this, in this big kind of cloud of evidence. But that's what it is. Um, and, that, you know, and as a consequence, um, you know, folks in the world like, um, like payers and, and healthcare providers and patients for that matter, regulators, product owners like pharmaceutical companies, you know, have, it's very hard to know what to make of something like this. And, and our, you know, the medical literature is full of studies just like this, this one, not many done as well as this. Um, but it's, it's a very confusing space where, yeah, you're, you're seeing, if you will, and what I'm gonna show on the top right here, if you follow along with me, what, what we kind of see here is a, a canvas that has a few blotches on it, but we really don't know what the big picture is. Um, and I think I will argue that what we saw this morning is a is a filling in of that canvas, cam canvas, a painting of that canvas. So quickly, what we saw is next slide, please. First of all, we saw the same study done by a different researcher or by by Odyssey folks, um, and and we saw it in in a similar to the original study, and then using kind of the Odyssey standard method. Next slide, please. We saw diagnostics on kind of industrial scale Odyssey style diagnostics, uh, which we didn't have before, filling in a bit more of the picture. Next slide, please. Then we added negative controls. This is a centerpiece of the, you know, the Odyssey philosophy. Um, and you know, again, adding a little bit more detail to the, ev the, the evidence picture you know, around the, the well, I guess, two questions that were being, being posed here. Next slide. Then we saw it over time. Next slide, please. Then we looked at subpopulations, which were you know, not included in, in the original paper, and as we saw, we saw very interesting things. Then we saw different databases, or a, di a different database first, and then we saw several other different databases. And um, then we saw a different population. So we started with this commercially insured folks, and then we, we looked at Medicaid and Medicare and so on. Next slide, please. Then we saw a di different data capture. So we saw what it looked like in claims data, and we saw what it looked like in electronic health record data. Uh, a database. Next slide, please. And then we put it all together, right? And, sh and sh sh we looked at a meta-analysis, you know, across all of these different uh, these different data sources. Next slide, please. So in the end, what we've ended up with, I would argue, is a canvas that is now complete. So now we can see the totality of the evidence um, from in, you know from from observational studies, you know, about these questions, S starting with same data and same analysis and then running through diagnostics and still analysis different data different populations different geographies different methods um, and finally i you know, met analysis piecing uh, piecing it all together um, I, to me this is taking observational research and an observational study to a whole new level in terms of uh, you know of, of what what we as a society can learn about the, the clinical questions that were being posed uh, posed here next slide please so the question then is great, uh, like you know, where do we go from here? So what, what what happened here was you know we started with a paper and then we we blew out this this uh, world of evidence you know around those questions. We 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 filled in the canvas. What we think is that we can we can systematize this. We can next slide please roll. Um, what we intend to do is to stand up an Odyssey reproducibility service, whereby we would systematize what you just saw, so that if you are a payer or a provider or a, or a, a patient or a regulator or you're a pharmaceutical company or a product owner, 
you see a study, or maybe you've done a study, a single study, you know, that you see it in, in the literature, that's one of those dots. Um, we can systematize what you just saw. So we will offer a service, and we is the Odyssey Center at Northeastern University, and, and you see some of the uh, individuals involved, they're probably familiar to many of you, um, along with some of our, our, our partners who are listed here. We can systematize this and offer this as a service so that you, 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 know, you come with a paper, a study, and we can do what you just saw, we can do this systematically you know, across different databases, adding the, the, the um, industrial scale uh, sensitivity analysis, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that, that is what we intend to do. We would be very excited to talk to any of you about this and to work with you as we, as we build, you know, as, we, as we create this service and stand it up. Um, but we think it really has, um, you know, th th this really could change the landscape in terms of, of uh, the possibilities for observation and research and the quality of evidence um, that, that, that we can generate. Um, you may have heard yesterday or, or earlier about the Odyssey Center. So we, we which is the, basically the people who are pictured on this slide, um, have, have created a, a, a center, the Odyssey Center at, at the Rue Institute at Northeastern University. Um, our goal is, is to build something that is, is absolutely additive to the Odyssey, to the global Odyssey community. Um, we're focused at the moment on, on building out educational products. We will have real world evidence uh, degree programs. And um, we're also standing up the Odyssey Lab, which will be a service to the Odyssey community. And then we believe this, this reproducibility service will be a sort of flagship uh, um, activity by the Odyssey Center um, that will, will you know, be, be available, uh, we hope, globally on, on, and on, on in, in a large scale. Um, that's it. I'd love to hear uh, comments either right now or, or in, uh, via email or whatever later um, as to what you think about this. Uh, last slide there, Patrick. Uh, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, David. I, I'm going to uh, encourage folks to put in put in the chat uh, any thoughts that you have, and we're going to have a couple. We're going to have a few minutes with David. I just want to reinforce, <coughs> um, excuse me, my reflections on, <coughs> excuse me, my reflections on today, and reinforce the importance of this announcement that that David and the Rue Center are are making. So, um, in the book of Odyssey. You all have, those of you who have read it, know that there's a chapter on evidence quality. I think I saw a case uh, posted it even in the chat at a certain juncture here, that we've talked about these issues of desired attributes for reliable evidence. We've talked about the fact that reliable evidence should be repeatable, that the same researcher given the same day and the same analysis better get the same answer. We talk about that we desire for things to be reproducible, that the same question on the same data with the same analysis, but by a different researcher, should give uh, similar results, and you just saw that from Mitch. We think we're, we think it's desirable for research to be replicable, meaning that the same question with the same analysis applied to similar but not identical data um, gets you similar results, and you saw examples of data sets like that from Christian. And we also want results to be generalizable, so not only applied to similar populations but different populations, and you saw this with the inclusion of Medicaid and Medicare. You want analyses to be robust, and here, here, you know, a large-scale sensitivity analysis is useful. Um, and when different analyses get you similar results, it strengthens your feeling. And within Odyssey, we fundamentally believe that statistics should have meaning, and therefore they should be well calibrated. So control experiments to tell you that you actually understand how to interpret statistics is essential. And I put this picture from the book of Odyssey up here because while while I don't think I've heard anyone argue against any of these attributes, look yourself in the mirror and think about the last study you've done and ask yourself honestly, do you satisfy all these attributes? You m might not need to, to generate evidence that is sufficient for making a decision, but certainly we should want to. And I think the reason why we haven't achieved these things in the past isn't because of lack of interest. But it's because for many years it actually wasn't necessarily feasible or it was too hard or maybe we didn't appreciate how important it actually was. But the, what I'm excited about what we did today together is the journey that we all took together on this this towards reproducible evidence. 
When Yasser started, we asked the question, how confident are you that this finding represents a true causal effect? And um, if we look at your responses, we can see that um, the, the, the most common response was that you were about 60% certain of a causal effect, um, uh, that there was a true causal effect. Another 25% were maybe 80% certain. Another 30% were less than 50% certain. We then saw from Anna from our Odyssey reproducibility challenge. And actually you can see that our, our confidence went down. But I'll assert that what Anna demonstrated is not a challenge in the validity of the causal effect, but actually the challenges of transparency in our current field. And that's a problem we can actually just solve by being more transparent and by sharing code. You then saw from Mitch the combination of reproducibility and robustness and you as a community reacted to that evidence, still the same data set, but by being able to reproduce and generating um, robust findings, many of you strengthened your confidence that this was a true causal effect. And as Shirley highlighted, we shouldn't confuse val uh, replication as just verifying something with validity, but you can gain confidence in your belief about an effect based on seeing that an independent researcher conducted these large scale of analysis. And then you saw from Christian as we dug into replicability and generalizability that we were able to show findings across different populations and you as a community responded, strengthening your confidence in the causal effect. Now, Yasser asserted actually that maybe it's not actually about the causal effect. Maybe it's just about good enough evidence to make decisions. And we asked the question, what do you think is the most appropriate health policy recommendation? Yasser asserted in his paper that randomized clinical trials are warranted to confirm the findings. But actually, you as a community didn't actually uh, agree with that. The majority of you actually listened to what Yasser said and, and said that, no, actually, more research is needed to support the findings before we even suggest that a trial happen. When Anna presented the results of our Odyssey reproducibility challenge, there was even more confusion. And now in a greater proportion of you just felt like more work should be done. And we just heard from our panelists, uh, surely imploring us to dig deeper and, and do more. Uh, and certainly that was certainly the sentiment that came out of our, our reproducibility challenge just two days ago. But what Mitch showed was that when you do dig deeper, and you do go the distance to really understand and, and flip over every stone, at least within a given database, you can start to change perception, at least within our community, as we saw the results of verifying reproduction and seeing reproducibility, we could now see that still many of you, the majority of you still felt like more work is needed, but now some of you started to think that maybe clinical education should be recommended to raise awareness. And even a, a handful of you, uh, now started to think that maybe the clinical guidelines should be shared. But as David just said, as we painted in the, the entire canvas, looking across the data network, with the results that Christian just showed, showing replicability and generalizability, you all responded by suggesting that now we have gone from thinking that it's not even worth asking for a randomized trial, to now the most common response from you all was that clinical education is re recommended to raise awareness of these findings. And more than half of you suggested that we either need to be focused on dissemination of the evidence or getting this evidence to change clinical uh, guidelines. Now this is your voice, not mine, um, but I think it shows the power of what David just highlighted. If we can take evidence generation to the next level, we have the opportunity to actually change minds about real world evidence, not just have it be a piece of information that is easily dismissed and not just be someone's speculation of a hypothesis that you ask somebody else to go chase with a multi-million dollar trial that will never ever be done, but instead become actionable evidence to guide clinical decisions and make better care. That's the stakes that are on the table right now for all of us as a community and I hope that many of you found value in this, in watching this story unfold and going on this journey together and hope that you will join me in being excited about what the Rue Institute is going to be able to bring to the Odyssey community. So I just want to end with my own thank you to Yasser for 
being willing to participate in this effort to produce a wonderful study that allowed us to start the painting. And as David has highlighted, uh, giving us the opportunity to work together to fill in that canvas. And the challenge that I want to offer, asked for all of you, is who's ready for the next journey together? So with that, I can't actually see the chat. So David, if you're looking at the chat, if anybody has asked any questions, maybe you could throw on your camera and we could be happy to take any questions that are popping up or in our way. So there's there's a uh, quite a bit going on in the chat. I don't not uh, particularly questions, but um, oh, so there are there are questions about um, you know for for example. Uh, what's the business model for this? Uh, the answer to that is we're we're that's a that's in in motion. We're not, we're trying to figure it out, but we're very keen to um, you know to dive in and start and start uh, you know st stand up the service and start offering you know start cranking out exercises like you just saw, and we'll figure out a business model you know as as we go along. It's not 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 uh, not kind of uppermost in our mind at this point. Um, that's one question. And another question that the Rosic was very interesting, which is, you know, would would we, in essence, um, you know, would we assist others in standing up a, a this service and in other places? And the answer is that absolutely yes. And that would be a fabulous outcome if you know if a service like this could be, um, you know, could become widely available in different centres using different, you know, perhaps different data and so on and so forth. That would be that would be spectacular. Um, let's see. Anyone else uh, want to pick out a question from the uh, chat? Uh, Aza has raised her hand, so let me um, allow her mic so she could ask her question. Aza, you should be able to unmute now. Actually, I was just raising my hand when you said, who's ready for the next journey? Ah, um, very good. <laughs> I was just oh. to your question. <laughs> very good. But, I got the sense I can ask a question. <laughs> I wonder if, like, I don't know how you're thinking of the sensor, but I wonder if you already have in mind actual, the actual process of how would that recruit disability look like. Like, okay, you have a sensor, you have very smart people, but is there any backbone of the actual process? And how do you I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I, I had a hard, hard time actually hearing that. Uh, I, think, I think I think Oz's question was, do, do we have a defined scientific process that we're going to march through to do this? Either either the Rue team by themselves or more broadly for Odyssey. Is there, we, we've seen now an anecdote, but how, how, David, you were kind of making a call for like, we need to systematize this. So what is that system? What is that process? Or, or and if we don't have it yet, do you have any like, insights of like, how do we get from where we are right now, which is, one compelling anecdote to uh, having a system where we really can productionize reliable evidence. Yeah, we're certainly not there. And please join us and, 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 you know, and help us figure this out uh, you know, in the coming in the coming months and years. Um, I think we have a number of pieces of it, and you know what we've learned uh, from the legend studies um, have you know have, we've learned a heck of a lot about doing this kind of thing systematically and at scale. Um, you know that said, um, I think. We, we will need to go through this. We, we have a lot of learning ahead of us. We will have to go through this exercise, I think, over and over to, to begin to see what are the quirks and, and, and features of, you know, of each individual study, which bits of this become, become routinized, uh, and which bits of it are more idiosyncratic for a particular study. Um, I, I think many of the themes that were highlighted in this session, you know, we will be doing this. You know, Odyssey-style diagnostics, different databases, Claims databases, EHR databases, different geographies, looking at things over time, looking at subpopulations. These things clearly can be systematized, um, and you know, you know exactly what we saw what we saw this morning. But I think you know we, we have a ways to go uh, to figure out kind of the the gold standard pro version of this. Christian, you raised your hand. Go ahead. Yeah. Um... So a little pro provocation here. What would happen, Patrick, had um, Yasser's study not panned out and you would have to, in public, smash it and tear it to pieces? What, what kind of 
well, I mean, apart from Yasser not being be happy, of course, um, but what effect would that have um, on the scientific progress, on the way we interact on these things, uh, on the willingness of people to um, to expose themselves to that kind of risk? Well, you, you know firsthand, Christian, that I'm perfectly fine smashing cakes in front of people. So I feel like we wouldn't even need to get Gallagher to smash the 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 watermelon if the science science is what it is. If we had shown, if we had uh, found found results that were different, you know, Yasser was a good partner in saying we're going to just let the chips fall where they may. But I actually think you're, you're raising something that's super important here. This story kind of played out nice in that we were able to confirm a finding. But I don't actually think it's about confirming the finding. I think it's about performing the test. And the test is whether or not something is reproducible. The test is whether or not results are robust. The test is whether or not results are generalizable. And the answer to that question could be yes or no, but you've learned something either way. If we didn't reproduce the study, that would have been an extremely important learning. If we didn't show the same effect in a different population, that would have been an extremely important learning. So I actually think, uh, you know, I like David's analogy of, of painting the canvas. We're filling in the canvas one way or the other. The question is, do you do you get a, a Picasso at the end um, uh, or a Rembrandt? Uh, I think no matter what, we're in a situation where you've got to learn. And personally, I actually think going through this exercise for me, it makes me kind of feel like we need to step up as a scientific discipline and heed the advice of other scientific disciplines who like don't even let people attempt to submit a paper unless they can verify that it's been repeated. You know, physics does not allow uh, main findings to be shared unless an independent group has produced a finding to like a p-value like less than like 0 0.0001. Um, you know, why do we get away with trust me science when the stakes are patients' lives? I don't see why it's acceptable for us to keep doing things the way that we're doing it, not sharing information in papers, not requiring that the, the canvas is full. And so I, I'm very um, passionate about what, what, what you and Kristen and David and the entire Rue team are bringing to our community because I actually think it's not only an important step forward, but it's a necessary and essential step to get to the point where we can actually start trusting this evidence. David, I'm going to apologize. I've lost the ability to see the chat on my side. My computer is very tired from today. <laughs> is there any other? I don't see any other comments. Do you want to just add any one last closing thought, David, before you go? There are raised hands, Patrick. Oh, raised there's hands. now raised hands. Let me see. Uh, that was Aza. Andrew. Uh, let's see. I got to un. I got to give you. Andrew, you should have the ability to, uh, to unmute yourself. Okay, so I just wanted to say, you know, looking forward as this gets out, I'm, I'm really excited about it, but also about the cumulative evidence result as a of the, you know, amount of replicability, the consistency of results for different kinds of questions that we can accumulate and start to see very broadly how observational uh, analyses support consistency in a, in a way that goes beyond sort of the anecdote or the one or two examples of things. And I think the comments of the panel, the first panel today about the complementary uh, relationship between observational evidence and trial evidence uh, and the aspirations of the observational research community to do things more efficiently that are just as reliable as uh, as trial uh, in the appropriate circumstances is a thing we'll start to be able to see more clearly as that happens. And particularly if we're able to juxtapose it to the kind of thing that uh, you, Patrick, and George presented a couple years ago on replicability in, in trial data. I think, you know, as, as we kind of get these two sets of methods lined up together and do and, and pick all examples that are rigorously done, we'll start to really clarify, you know, how how much trust is is deserved in each of these kinds of approaches and it's an extremely exciting prospect well said andrew david let me just turn to you for fi final thoughts and then i'm going to dive into my closing ceremony um i just want to thank everyone for being here today i i hope i hope you find this idea interesting of a, of a reproducibility service um and 
please you know just be be in touch with your ideas and with studies that you think would be would be interesting ones to uh, to to which to apply the service. Um, I I you know I, I really sincerely believe that you know if if this takes observational studies or observational research to a new to a new level. Um, and exactly what Patrick is saying is if if you know what, why do we get away with with uh, publishing the single dot, the, you know, the blotch on, on the canvas, uh, when we now demonstrably, uh, you know, have the wherewithal to provide, if not if not that complete picture, a much more complete picture of the, the totality of the evidence. So I, I'm 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 extremely excited about this. Thank you, thank you, David, and thank you, the Rue team. This is a, a big, big milestone moment for our community to have this service available, and I think it's going to really galvanize uh, exciting research uh, moving forward. So thank you all.